Hey programmers, welcome back. All right now, let's talk about variables. So if you want to code along with me right now, what you should do is open up your VS Code and create a new file somewhere that you can run. So over here, I'm going to create a file called variables.js, and this is where I'll write all my code for this little lecture. So first off, what is a variable? Well, a variable is just a piece of code that I can use to store information. In particular, I can store a value inside. So why don't we just start by declaring our first variable. There's really nothing much to it. So in JavaScript, what I can do to declare a variable is use a new keyword called let. And then after that, I need to say the name of my variable. And so I can give this variable a name. I'll try to always make it a descriptive name. And so what I'll say is my favorite color is, we'll say, green. So let's just break down what happened here. So we have a variable declared called color. So that's the name of the variable. And when we want to give it a value, we use equals, right? We call that the assignment operator. Notice that we're using a single equals here, right? We should not use triple equals. We should not use double equals. If you want to store a value in a variable, then you use single equals. And here I assign the value of green into that variable. And now at this point, what I can do is do whatever I want really with this variable. Let me just console.log it to start. So I'm gonna print out the color variable. And I'll run this code. So I'll make sure that my terminal is opened up uh, right next to wherever I have my variables.js file saved. So my terminal is already in the, the right spot. So I'll just run variables.js. And there I see green printed out. Notice that although I printed out color, right, I'm not going to literally see like the text color. I'm going to see the value that that variable contains, right? I know it contains green right now. And so all that really happens in this code is after a variable is like declared, whenever you reference that variable name later on, JavaScript's just gonna substitute the value for that variable name. In other words, before it can print out anything, it must actually kind of behind the scenes replace color with what I assigned it, which is green. So really just a matter of some substitution. And what's really cool is at this point, the color variable behaves exactly like a string because it basically is a string. So like one thing I can do is any string operations, like perhaps add an exclamation point to it. All right, so this should still evaluate to green exclamation point because I know the left-hand side of this plus just refers to the string green. Then it's business as usual, right? I already know how to evaluate expressions like this. So when it comes to what data you can store in variables, you can really store anything, right? So I can store numbers, strings, and booleans. Let's say I switch it up and I store a number. So I'll have some number. I'll set it equal to 42. And from here, of course, I can do any number operations with this. So, you know, I'll just console.log that number. Just some review for now. So this totally works. And again, I could do some number operations with this. So let's say I did number plus one. So I already know that this is going to print out 43, right? Because I did 42 plus one. Nice. But the important thing to note about writing code like this is this expression, so this highlighted bit, that evaluates to a new value of 43, but it doesn't actually change the original number variable. In other words, after this, if I just console.log the plain old number by itself, it should still be 42, right? So 43 comes from this line, 42 comes from the second line, right? So it hasn't really changed overall. And so in general, when you have uh, operations that use variables, you want to be very particular and try to foresee what operations will actually change the variables and what operations won't, right? So if you look at tricky code like this, you should be able to see this and recognize that, hey, the number variable on line seven will still refer to the regular 42 because line six actually doesn't change the number variable, right? So I'll run this just to do a quick sanity check. Nice. Let's say I wanted to rewrite this code a little bit so that I actually do change uh, the number variable by adding one to it. Well, then you could just use some assignment operation, right? So let me say number should be assigned to be number plus one. Right, so this code may look a little weird at the start, but we have to recognize is technically I'm just doing a variable assignment over here, right? And when I do a variable assignment, I'm always taking the right-hand expression or the right-hand value and storing it into the left-hand variable name. So the first thing that I must evaluate is this right-hand side. And so I know that number right now refers to just a 42. And I know 42 plus one is 43. So now I'm just taking 43 and storing it in the number variable. So of course I'm gonna print out 43 at the very end here. So let's give that a go. I'll bring it back to the general form. Notice how we can change the variable. This operation of like adding to a variable and also changing is pretty common. And JavaScript actually gives you some nice shorthand that you can use. And so an equivalent line to line six would be number plus equals one. You kind of see that's a combination of both the plus and the assignment operation. So not only will this add one to the number variable, but it will also change 
uh, that number variable, right? So it starts at 42, I add one, and now it's 43, and you can add you know, any value you want. So I can add 10 to it if I want, and that'll give me a 52 at the very end. And what's great is this shorthand actually exists for uh, most of the arithmetic operations. In other words, I can do a minus equals 10. So in this case, I should get 32 now, right? Nice. I can do a times equals 10, in which case I get a 420. And I can also do a divide equals, in which case I get 4.2. So you'll definitely find this shorthand useful, but I also want you to really understand what it really means under the hood, right? So line seven would be the same as this line, right? So there's still some more shorthand to look at, but let's come up with another variable to mess around with. So a very common convention in programming is if you have a simple number variable that's just used to like count stuff, it's very conventional to call it i. So I'm gonna set i equal to zero over here. So it's just the number zero. And another way that I can change this i variable is by adding one to it using the increment operation. So I can use i plus plus, and this has the effect of adding one to my i variable, but also saving that value back into i. So let me console.log i up here. And I want to actually print it out after I increment and before I increment. So it should be zero and then one. So this is another shorthand uh, you can use. And it really does the same thing as if we did, you know, i plus equals one. There is also a decrement operation. So if you do i minus minus, now on line five, i starts at zero, we decrease it by one. Now it's negative one over here. All right, so now that we have uh, variables in mind, let me show you a common shortcoming. So let's say I had a variable like i, but I didn't assign it a value. So I just wrote i and then a semicolon. This is actually a valid JavaScript syntax. And what this does is it just declares the variable i, but it won't actually assign it a value. So let me run code like this. And we're gonna see the default value inside of i. So I should actually console.log i, right? So if I try to print out the i variable, it doesn't contain anything right now. And so when I run it, I print out undefined, right? So by default, if I don't assign a value into a variable, you will have the value undefined stored in that variable. Undefined is a special value in JavaScript, and it really just represents like the default value that comes up. And we're going to be seeing undefined quite a few times uh, during the course. Sometimes just declaring a variable without assigning it any value is useful because maybe you want to assign it later on. So what I could do is like have it be undefined for a little bit and then maybe assign into it some, some number, right? So that's totally fine as well. Notice that when you do it in this way, you should only declare the variable once. So when I say let, that is a variable declaration, you should only declare it once. And then when you reassign it later on, you don't say let again, right? So you should not do this. Instead, you just say i equals 100. Let's say that you made the mistake of saying let using the same variable name twice. In other words, on line 10, you said this, you'll actually get a pretty descriptive error saying that we redeclared uh, this variable, right? So I can't reuse the variable name when I say let, right? That'd be redeclaring the variable, which JavaScript doesn't let you do. Another common mistake that you may make is maybe misspelling your variable names. So let's say I have some variable called name. I set that equal to Alvin. Now let's say I wanted to print that out, but I accidentally wrote console.log, let's say nam, right? So I'm missing the E here. This will actually give us an error, right? And it's different from being undefined because nam isn't even something that's valid in my code, right? It's not even like an empty variable, it's just incorrect. So this will actually give us a reference error. So when you see like a reference errors in your code, it'll say usually a longer description next to it, like nam is not defined. And so what you wanna do is just look at your code and make sure you have spelled those variables, right? Nam is not defined because only name is a defined variable, right? So I could just fix it by correcting my spelling over here. So let's just practice evaluating one more expression for the rope. So what I'll do is create a variable, I'll call it is even. And what I'll do is take a number like 50 and I'll mod it by two, check if that is equal to zero, right? So if I look at code like this, of course we have to evaluate the right-hand side first and then I assign that single value into the left-hand variable name. So if I do 50 mod two, that does give me zero, right? I know that zero is equal to zero. And so I just store true into my is even variable. So I can run this code. And if I print out is even, it should be true. And notice what I'm doing with like this variable name. It kind of describes what it represents in my code. I can use modulo in this way to actually check uh, if my number is even, right? And so instead of 50, I'll put 51. I know that this left-hand side now evaluates to one. One is not equal to zero. So now is even will be false. 
All right, programmers, that's all we need to know for now with variables. What you definitely want to do is hop into the next video where we're going to have an exercise dealing with variables, right? It's really important that you just don't watch someone else write some code and talk about it, but you also code for yourself, right? So you should always watch the lecture and then do the exercise right after. So I'll see you in the next one.